before I can jump into this living room makeover, I have to start with the basics, which are just cleaning up the room and keeping it clean enough to actually change out some things. A lot of the times our living room looks just like this, so I will take you step by step through the process of picking up, deep cleaning, taking everything out of the living room, rearranging, putting up a new rug, and we also ordered a brand new light. So we were actually taking this one down, moving it, and putting it in um, the front entryway and replacing this light. So you probably also saw a balloon stuck up there since Valentine's Day. We will finally get that balloon down and refresh this room. We don't have any plans to move in the next couple of years, so my goal is to change out a few things piece by piece, and hopefully that will give it a new feel without actually physically moving locations. But if this is your first video to ever watch from me, then welcome, I'm glad you clicked on this video. This is probably one of my favorites to ever make because there's just so much that goes on. I do try and give you guys lots of real life inspiration and not just motivation. So in all aspects of your life, but especially in the home. I have two young daughters and I am 25 weeks pregnant with baby number three. So this week's project is pretty challenging, so we'll see how well that we do. But let's go ahead and get started. You think you know me. Say I'm as cold hearted as they come. You think I'm slowly. As I'm getting started picking up, I'm excited to share with you the Yeedy brand new VAC2 Pro. Some really neat and awesome features about this robot vacuum are that you can download the app directly to your phone and control the settings through the app. Another really cool feature is that the Yeedy VAC2 Pro has a smart visual mapping and navigation. So after you've downloaded the app, basically you will allow the vacuum to run one full cycle so that it can map out your entire house. So the next time that you use the vacuum, it will memorize that route accordingly and also cleans in neat rows without missing any spots. One of the other things that I love about this vacuum is that it also has an oscillating mopping system. So all you do is fill up the canister with some water, attach the mop to the vacuum, and go ahead and begin the cycle. It cleans in neat rows and also picking up contaminated areas within just one pass. If I go over the area with a paper towel, then you can see that it left no residue behind. So what makes this vacuum incredibly unique is the oscillating mopping system, which basically mimics the hand motion scrubbing back and forth. It can fit under tight areas of your house, but also has a 3D obstacle avoidance technology. So you don't have to worry about picking up toys or cleaning your house before you turn it on because it can detect obstacles in the way and move accordingly. So while I was getting some more cleaning done, I turned on the vacuum feature and it picked up a ton of dust. All you have to do is empty the tray out and see how much dirt that it picked up in just a short amount of time. There is also an auto dustpan emptying option, which is sold separately. So be sure to check out my link below to purchase the Yeedy VAC2 Pro. Trying to get away from this life I'm living Same old things every day Wanna change this feeling Wasting no more time Don't care about what you're saying Try to keep me down No time for all your playing Yeah, even if you doubt me now You should know I don't care about The things you say I don't even know 
so I'm just gonna finish cleaning up the kitchen and then tomorrow is when I actually start the living room deep clean but just to give you an idea of my thought process around this and if you haven't been following previous videos is that the first thing that we changed out were the pendant lights and I'll show you a little bit later on what they looked like before and what they look like now in case you hadn't seen that and then of course once those pieces come in then I kind of see what they look like and then I pick out a couple more pieces which is what I'm doing in this video with the new rugs and the new chandelier next I do have some bar stools that were on back order now those are a little bit more modern so kind of mixing this collectic look with some modern pieces some industrial some kind of traditional is why I'm taking it one step at a time and hoping that it all goes together and looks good in the end. So these are what the pendant lights looked like before we changed them a month or so ago. And this is what they currently look like. So we went with a darker kind of more industrial look. Now I'm moving on the next day where I'm gonna work on getting the couch deep cleaned and vacuumed out. Now I also know I'm gonna get questions about why am I buying new this? Why am I buying new that? Well, my whole goal is to change out a lot of stuff in this area. So that's why it seems like, oh, I bought this, I'm buying this, is because that is my goal. We've been in this house for seven years and this is all furniture from the day we moved in. So. I'm just kind of at that seven year itch where I'm ready to freshen things up. I'm ready to change things out. I'm ready to make the investment to do that. So it feels like a new space, like I said before, without actually having to physically move spaces. Now that I think about it, I think this is the longest house I've ever lived in in my entire life. So usually when I move houses and I'm like, oh, I need to get stuff to fit that new space. Not that I just, not that I get everything new. It's just that you just need, need different things that may, may fit that space better. So I also enjoy home decor. It just takes me a little bit longer to make a decision and make the commitment that this is going to be the right piece that I need for this space. Now keep in mind this by no means means that you need to go out and feel obligated to get anything new. This is just, maybe it's my pregnancy, maybe it's something that's just like triggered me to be like, okay, I, I feel like I'm ready to change up this space. Now my more expensive investment pieces like my couch, I'm not getting rid of, I'll probably hang on to that for until it falls to threads. But some of the things that I got more on a budget, I guess you can say, um, that haven't held up as well is more or less what I feel like I want to switch out. But I'm curious to know how often do you mix things up in your space or change things out? Do you kind of have the same things that you've always had, kind of like how I did, or do you change things up a lot more often? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. We've been driving around singing songs way too loud because we wanna So I don't think that the couch is terrible as far as like dirtiness, but I do have, of course, dog hair and there are some popcorn kernels in there. So Chris, my husband and Sailor, my four-year-old, every night they typically make a bag of popcorn and that's how we like sit on the couch and relax. Um, I like popcorn, but I'm not like one to eat it every single day but typically that's how they get all these popcorn kernels stuck in between the couch but anyway my goal for this day is to just get everything kind of cleaned up under the couch and then the next day is when or whenever the next time i come back to this spot is is when i'm going to take all of the cushions off the couch and wash them now that to me is like a workout in itself because it takes forever to do so I have had comments like, you have so much energy, how do you get so much done? And my secret is, is that the, these videos are sped up times four and it's all done within at least three or more days. 
And to be completely honest, I hardly ever get everything done in one day. It's always a combination of several days. And typically I have to go back and look at how many out different outfits I'm wearing to determine how long, how many days I worked on making this one video. One funny thing is I didn't think that I would have enough footage to make this video and I ended up having like five to six hours of footage. So I tried to condense it as much as I possibly could, but this still ended up being a crazy long video. So if you stick around for the whole thing, wow, I appreciate you. And I'll try my hardest to keep you motivated throughout the whole thing. So these cushions come off so they can be washed and as you can see that is actually part of an avocado stain as well as who knows what else is on this couch so the girls we don't eat at dirt at the couch typically besides the popcorn that i mentioned but sometimes like dirty hands dirty faces just jumping on the couch i don't know things who knows what half of this stuff is it's just that it gets messy typically washing these cushions helps get a lot of the stuff out i don't have anything that is just hardcore permanently stained um, i know that it's kind of like iffy to have a light colored couch with young kids and a dog and you know all of the things but we, i bought it before we had kids and that was just the color that i wanted and it's so far it's worked out pretty well the only thing I will say is that the arms of the couch where you can't take off the cushions and wash them is where I tend to have difficulty getting stains out. Now I've used um, like shampooers, I've used like spot cleaners, but there are still some spots that I wish I could clean a lot better. Um, other than that, that's really the only complaint I've had about having a, a lighter colored couch with a lot of things going on in the house. Now, when I was vacuuming, I didn't, I forgot to mention that I was using, I used a combination between the Tinco cordless vacuum and the Dyson cordless vacuum. So a lot of these cordless vacuums will come with different parts. Um, and I do get asked about like what types of vacuum I use. So I feel like the Dyson is super powerful on the couch. I like the attachment piece that comes with it. Um, it gets a lot of the dog hair off. So a lot of times the dog hair will get on blankets or pillows um, and then it'll just, you know, get on the couch. And for like pet hair and things like that, the Dyson cordless vacuum with like the handheld attachment is what I feel like is the most powerful and getting pet hair off the couch. Now, while all the cushions are washing and it takes extra long because I do have to wash them in gentle cycle and also um, delicate dry, it just takes so much longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shampoo up the rug. So the reason why I'm shampooing up the rug is because I'm going to give it to my sister. So I want it to be like nice and clean before I give it to her um, before then I replace this rug. Now I'm using the Bissell Pet Pro Shampooer. And one thing with this rug that we had gotten is that it is so thin. Um, that was one complaint I had with it. I liked the design, I liked everything about it. The living room rug is just a high traffic area and I used to not hardly ever switch them out. And then I think I went like two years and switched it out and then I had just bought this one last year. And you can see a little bit where the discoloration is, where the coffee table was. So when looking for a new rug, I wanted something a little bit thicker. And um, I asked you guys on my Instagram a couple weeks ago, you guys voted and I did end up getting one you voted for, which is actually gonna go in my um, kitchen runner area. And then I ordered the other one for this living room area. So a, a while back, I had questions about doing um, shampooers on rugs if you have a hard wood underneath because people were concerned that if I shampoo the rug, then it would get all wet and then it would seep underneath and then ruin the wood underneath. And um, with this shampooer, you can control the amount of liquid, the amount of fluid or cleaner or water that comes out of it. So um, I try to kind of control it and not do it super, super thick. I also have a rug pad underneath. So I typically will check and see 
um, how much water got underneath and just make sure that none got on the wood floor. So you can still use these on rugs and in my opinion, I do like using them on rugs. I'm actually gonna try a new shampooer next week, which I'm excited about. And our other method for cleaning rugs is to take it outside and power wash it. That's the way my husband prefers. Um, and it actually does do an awesome job. You give me this energy. It is like you set me free. Chasing heights to stay alive. But if I'm with you, I'll survive. So since I'm doing some shampooing, the next thing that I wanted to shampoo were these bar stools. So that is, I think that's ketchup on that bar stool. So we don't have a kitchen table area. We just have our dining room and then we have these two bar stools and then we have a smaller table for the, for the girls to eat at. Um, but sometimes they'll hop on these bar stools and eat as well. So food will get stuck on this and stained on them. Um, so I'm gonna shampoo these bar stools, even though I did order new bar stools that are on back order, um, I'm just going to try and clean these up as best I can. And then I will figure out um, what I'm going to do with them later. So for here, I'm using the Bissell Little Green Machine. Now the other shampooer that I just used, the Pet Pro Carpet Shampooer does have a handheld attachment. So you probably don't need both if you have the handheld attachment on that one but I somehow broke that handheld attachment. I have no idea how on that one. So I did order this little green machine so that I could do some easier spot cleaning. Next week, I'm gonna be trying out a new carpet shampooer, which I am really excited about. So in pretty much every single video, and you know this if you've been here before, I like to do a lot of learning, a lot of self-development. I read a lot, listen to podcasts, and try and share some helpful tips with all of you guys from something that I've learned. And I've gotten some recent questions about which podcasts I've been listening to recently. And also real quickly, why it's so important. So first off, the two people that I like to listen to on YouTube, which they have podcasts as well, are Tony Robbins, which is like the head mastermind of self-development and all things life-related, and then also um, Tom Bilyeu. Podcast-wise, I've been enjoying Rachel Hollis, Lori Harder, and Jim Quick. Now, if you've ever heard the saying, if you're the smartest one in the room, then you're in the wrong room, that means that you need to surround yourself with people who are uplifting, going to motivate you, going to inspire you, and also have dreams and goals that they have maybe reached that you hope to reach one day. I started reading books and listening to podcasts to really help me get out of my comfort zone and stop settling for things that I knew that I had such a bigger purpose in life. And it took a long time for me to realize that. So I know that every single one of you guys listening today has a purpose and is meant to be here. You are so much more important than the way that your house looks or the way that you clean your house or the tools that you use to do it. Sometimes we just need some convincing within ourselves that we are good enough. But later in this video, I do wanna share some tips about having a breakthrough moment, which I learned from Tony Robbins in a recent podcast. But this dirty water is from the two bar stools that I just shampooed up. So I finally got the rugs in and I'm changing out this runner rug. We gave it to a friend 
and while everything else in the living room is drying I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the rug and the runner so this was the rug that all of y'all had voted for on my Instagram for our living room rug but I ended up ordering it as a runner rug and I absolutely love it it's longer it's wider and I feel like it fits the space so much better so thanks for your help in voting for that the next thing I'm gonna do is try and take apart the couch and I couldn't do it by myself so I had to wait for Chris to come home one day and help me um, move the couch out of the way. That way I could do more deep cleaning in this area and then roll up that rug. So let's see what all we find when I move this around. Reboot, I'm COVID, my service automated like data running through my veins. Got you distracted, subconscious overloaded. Careful, don't pull the cord on me. to use the Folex carpet cleaner to get a couple more spots that I saw off of the rug. This is really my go-to stain remover for carpets and rugs. Now that I have everything moved out of the way, I'm going to give these window sills a clean. Usually there's us there's just bugs in dog care, nothing too, too terrible. Luckily, I thought it was going to be a lot dirtier than it was. I think because we had just moved the couch after Christmas, whenever we took down the Christmas tree. So it wasn't too, too long ago that I cleaned up this area. Um, so that's why it's not that bad. I pulled up the old rug and went, went ahead and rolled that up to give it to my sister and also the rug pad. So underneath the rug pad, I had we had sand because Chris had put sand out in the yard to level it and it just, it I guess it just kind of accumulated underneath that rug pad. To clean the window sills, I'm just going, I'm just using the e-cloths and I'm also kind of going down the baseboards a little bit, but the e-cloths are supposed to have some type of magic in them where all you have to do is wet them and they they kill 99% of the germs. So I've been enjoying the e-cloths actually a lot more recently. I've had them for, I don't know, eight months or so maybe. And I typically use the e-cloths in the kitchen area a lot more often than the regular cloths. But I noticed that I have been grabbing them a lot more often. So it is now like bug season. I feel like when the warmer weather comes, we get so many bugs, including mosquitoes. That was like a really big mosquito hawk and I don't know, spiders, cockroaches, all of those things that somehow sneak around. It was so funny because um, a couple weeks ago we went to a birthday party and I saw a spider in the car and it like jumped at me. I was in the passenger seat and we had 45 minute drive to where we were going and this was like five minutes in the drive and I got my shoe and I tried to like get it and kill it and it went in between the grooves in my shoe and it fell 
like in between the seat and in between the console. And Chris was driving and I was like, I can't move. Like I was like on the side, I was like, I need it gone. I can't like drive just knowing that it's sitting there still alive and everything like that. And so anyway, I sat there and watched it in the most comfort uncomfortable position for 45 minutes because I was like deathly afraid of it. And I'm not even that scared of spiders. I just don't want to be confined next to it. Um, and like it jump at me and not have anywhere to go. So let me know what your biggest insect fear is. Mine is actually probably cockroaches. If it was a cockroach, I would have jumped out of the car. But um, leave me a comment below. Let me know what your biggest insect fear is. So I'm finally pulling out the new rug. I laid down the rug pad and I ordered both of the rugs from a website called Miss Amira. And I actually saw this rug a long time ago, but at the time they were only shipping from Australia. And I was like, I'm not gonna pay the cost to ship it from Australia to the US, this big giant thing. But I saw they, they created a Miss Amira US. So I ended up ordering it from there and I got it like within a week. So this is a nine by 12 size rug. And um, first I'm trying to unroll it and I was like, they rolled it backwards. Like it wasn't easy for me to just unroll if you see what I mean. So I was trying to like figure out how I could get it to where I wouldn't have to turn it over, unroll it and flip it back over. But I ended up having to do that anyway. Now I will say I really, really like this rug. It is nice and thick, but it also, the material on it, it almost feels like a performance material so that it can be in high traffic areas. It's not like super, super soft, but it feels like it will just hold up all of the traction or like I said, high traffic area in this space. <laughs> I miss you, miss you Take you off, I came me way to strong Cannot keep it low-key Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Auto, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? So one dilemma I came across is that the rug pad is actually bigger than the rug itself. So if it wasn't on perfectly, you can see like the rug pad coming through underneath. So I, I don't recommend this rug pad. I got my old rug and this rug pad from overstock.com, but I don't, I don't like it, but it helps keep the rug in place. So until I get a new one, I can, you know, replace it then. So I'm trying to just like smooth everything out to make sure it's all even. And then what I end up having to do is go back through and cut, cut this rug pad. So like I said, it, it, it's not my favorite, but um, at least this way, the rug can sit nicely on top of it and you don't see that rug pad underneath. So once I get the rug, rug down and then get the rug pad cut and all squared away and got everything smooth and even out, then my next step is to wait for Chris to come home so that we can move the couches back in place. In the meantime, I did get all of the cushions dried, so I'm going to start putting all the cushions back, cushion covers back on the couch, on the cushions. You know what I mean. So clearly I'm struggling here, but it's all good. So I promised you guys to give you some of the tips that I heard from a recent podcast from, it was actually Jim Quick's podcast where he interviewed Tony Robbins. So a lot of the other um, influential people that I find are from people who I like who have like interviewed somebody else. And then I may go check out their podcast if I really enjoyed the interview. But in this podcast, um, Tony Robbins was talking about how to how people have breakthrough moments or what motivates them or what gets them to achieve that breakthrough moment. And so like when you want to start something new or make a transformation or change something, he said that most people start with the strategy. And sometimes strategy can be effective, but in majority of cases, it's not the strategy that's going to get you there or at least that's not where you should start. So he used the example of weight loss. Like for example, people are like, 
people want to start with the strategy, want to go with this tactic, want to do that tactic. But he said that you should never start with this strategy. You first need to change your state, meaning your mindset, and the story you are telling yourself about this thing. So let's say, for example, you want to start a weight loss transformation and you buy this program and you start your program with day one and then you get really discouraged and you just give up all motivation. Well, the problem is, is that you didn't change your story first. What is the story you're telling yourself? I've tried everything. Nothing works. I've tried all the diets out there. I've done all this. Well, he says, if you tried everything, then you should, it should work, right? If you've done everything out there in the book, then it should work. So what you need to do is reshape your mindset and reshape the story that you're telling yourself about this. So for example, instead of saying, I've tried everything, nothing works, it's not for me, it just doesn't work on my body, change your story and say, I can do this, I want to do this, I am motivated to do this, I will do whatever it takes. And once you reshaped your state of mind, then you will find the motivation and drive to then follow the strategy that then comes next. Because a lot of these things and strategies and tactics to whatever it is you're trying to transform is not rocket science. There's really not tons of secrets or anything like that. It, the secret is changing your state of mind and believing in yourself that you can do it. And it's not something you just say one day and then feel motivated all the time right? It's like a daily habit. It's a daily practice that you have to build confidence every single day. And once you continually do that, then you actually start believing in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, you, then there are no limits in what you can do and what you can accomplish. So I encourage you, even before you get started with your daily to-do lists or tasks or however you get your st stuff accomplished, is to say something positive about yourself. Because I will always preach that being a good, genuine, kind person and being confident in who you are beats having a clean house any day of the week. Hey, I've been dreaming now about you. Every night I see your clearest day. It's just something about the way you make me feel cause I can't concentrate anytime you're beside me yeah it's what you do to me I can barely breathe hey I've been thinking about you and all the words that I'm gonna say the next time that I see your pretty face Cause I can concentrate anytime you're beside me. Yeah, it's what you do to me. I can barely breathe. So I'm really happy with the way that everything turned out, and I'm really glad that we went with this rug for this area. The next thing that we are going to attempt to put together is this light. And some of the challenges that we have are that one we have 20 foot ceiling so it's actually that light has been sitting there for i want to say a week or two and chris is going to attempt to put this together i was hoping that he could just do it all by himself but i ended up having to help a lot it is such a beautiful light i want to tell you that i was looking for new lights for probably a month or two trying to find the perfect one and i made the investment i got this one from pottery barn and it's crystals that you have to hang each individual crystal on the outside of the i guess it's like an ovally shaped light so i was i was like hoping that it would just turn out phenomenal and look gorgeous in the space and i'm so glad that i went with this one because i think at the end of the day it does some of the other lights that I've purchased in the past, like the one that we already have in our living room area is from Wayfair. I think I have gotten one from overstock.com. Um, but overall, and you can find some affordable dupes, but I just wanted pure elegance. I couldn't find anything that I liked or that I envisioned for the space. So like every time I would look, I would raise my budget a little bit more and then I just decided to go for it. So the very first thing that we have to do is get in this ladder. So this is a super, super tall ladder. It's really heavy and we had to get it out, out from the side of the fence. And 
one of my jobs is to help throughout this whole process. And I'm like, okay, Chris, I'm 25 weeks pregnant. So just bear with me if I'm a little bit slower, I'm going to do the best that I can. But um, overall, it was a challenge, but we were able to get this ladder moved. There's something about your face, can't stop looking your way. Okay, so how often do you guys clean your chandeliers and light fixtures? I don't know why, I've just never thought about it. So we have like June bugs in here. It is so dirty. And once I get this thing all cleaned up and shiny, it pretty much looks like a brand new light. It's really unbelievable. So this light is a restoration hardware dupe. I think it's from Overstock. I can't fully remember where I got it, but it actually started off in our dining room then moved to our living room and it was there for a couple of years and now we're moving it to the front entryway so it's not very heavy because these are not real crystals they're plastic so it, it feels a lot lighter whereas the new light fixture is so heavy so we tend to like put it up and then put the light fixtures i mean the crystals on last and this light fixture came in like a hundred million pieces, y'all. Like every little single dangly thing had to be attached and connected together. It took like several hours to put this thing together. But you can definitely see how dirty it is and how often I don't clean it. So one of the big things that I've heard before and actually from Lisa Holt Design, she's a YouTube... And, She's a YouTuber here, but she's like a professional interior designer is she says like to, to change up the envelope of the room. So like the top, the wall and the bottom first before you like fill out the middle with furniture. So I am drawn to light fixtures. The number one thing I love changing out in our house is light fixtures and rugs. If you can't already tell, I feel like it makes the biggest statement and the biggest change in the space that you have. <laughs> So what's going on here is that we got the base part assembled, but the poles are not long enough. So Chris, we had some extra change. So we chains, so we had to add chains to the poles to make it long enough. And there's our poor sweet balloon that's been up there for two months that we haven't been able to get down until now. So we spray painted the chains black. So we're gonna add those chains to the poles so that it sits down low enough. So while that is drying, then our next task is to move the ladder over to the front entryway so that we can take down the current light that's there and then add that um, globe light in the front entryway. 
So this front light is a light that actually came with the house when we bought it. We had like bought the bronze lighting package or something like that. We had changed out most of the light fixtures besides that one. And I will say that it takes us so much long longer to switch out these light fixtures. And I didn't plan on getting on ladders and stuff like that, but I ended up having to help a lot more than anticipated so this space is actually the space above the front door so when he was up there he was like it is so dirty up here and he offered to clean it but i said that i would get on one of the smaller ladders and clean up all of the dust on this windowsill or whatever the ledge is on on top of the front door so here i am trying to hold my balance on the ladder hold the camera and then hold the vacuum and try and get everything cleaned up as best I can without falling. And just so you know, I am being super careful. So here I'm on top of the front door. So that's like the ledge on top of the front door where there is also a ton of dust and everything. So here I'm trying, I'm using another e-cloth and I'm trying to get all the dirt as best I can. And it's not, it doesn't end up being completely perfect because I'm like, you know, it is what it is. Um, I just am trying not to fall. So um, I do get it as best as I possibly can, which is a lot better than where it was at before. And again, this is another never cleaned before area. So once Chris has got the new light fixture hung up, it looks brand new now that it's nice and clean and shiny. We just need to change that one back there in the corner. I'll have to find something that matches a little bit better and then we will attempt to change that out. So now we're moving back to the living room light. We've got all of the chains dried from painting them black so that they'll match. And now we gotta move this ladder one more time. Like I said, it is so heavy, but we are determined to finish this up today. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a fire. Unpredictable, so original. You are never backing down, backing down, backing down. That's what I like about you. So dangerous. I get this rush when I'm with you. I go so the base part isn't too heavy, and our strategy here is to get everything hooked up and get the right level we want. So we had to like adjust it a little bit to make sure that that is the height that we wanted it. And then I started to hang the crystals each individually. So it's kind of funny, but I had a question for my Instagram while I was doing this. I was kind of showing you guys through the process over there. And um, somebody said, how do you get your husband to help you do all of this stuff? Most of the time, like maybe their husband um, works all day or like does manual labor all day. So when he comes home, he doesn't want to do more manual labor. And I totally get it. I wouldn't want to either. So Chris is just like, go, go, go 24 seven. Typically I'm like, I'm gonna hire someone to do this. And he's like, no, I can do it myself. So that's kind of how I get him motivated to um, get up and help me around the house. Plus he enjoys all of this kind of stuff. So um, I got really lucky with that. So we finally got the light up and it turned out beautiful. I'm absolutely in love with the look of this space. I hope that you guys enjoyed this long video and if you are not subscribed, I would love it for you to click that subscribe button. And be sure to stick around for the next minute or so of the video because I do have some of those real life blooper moments to share with y'all. Jingle Bell Rock? Listen to Jingle Bell Rock right now? I like to play Jingle Bell Rock. Why are you drinking coffee? We 
You like that? Yeah. <gasps> no. What? Like right here? It seems to be like messed up. And you're still not done yet? <laughs>